Now as we get ready to do Hanging of the Grange, we're gonna, this service, if you've been here the last couple of years, we had lots of liturgy, had lots of back and forth. Um, and this service will always be, probably as long as I am a part of it, it is a, it is a place of movement and participation. It's a place where, where right now, there's really kind of only one thing that says Christmas or Advent, but yet it's not ready, is it? And so we're going to explain the gifts of Christmas this year. And we're going to, and this is a place where people are going to move the whole time through service, okay? <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. I'm going to tell you there's going to be greens that are hanging wrong. That There is no way our kids are going to reach the top of that Christmas tree. They're not that tall, and I wasn't bringing a ladder out here for that, okay? That just, no, I'm not that brave. So when something's a little askew, if you're putting it up, or if you see somebody that got it askew, don't worry about it. We'll fix it today. We'll fix it tomorrow. I promise you we'll have it ready for next Sunday, okay? So, the, um, but this is a time where we celebrate those things. And the first thing we're going to do is talk about really is the life and the light as the gift of Christmas. And so I've asked Pastor Judy to come, and she's going to read uh, a scripture passage with, with us or for us, and then she's going to light the tree. Thank you. Would you please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel this morning? I'm going to be reading to you John 1, 1 through 5, and 9 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And the light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. The word was, did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive it. Yet all who did receive him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a man's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Can we all say, thanks be to God? Amen. You may be seated. our kids to come up this morning the um all right y'all are going to be up here a lot and for a long time today okay Can I decorate so yeah we're gonna get to decorate but first off we're going to learn about part of y'all sit down we're going to learn about part of our um our gifts of christmas hold on let me see if i can get Okay, and I have brought Caroline up here to read some passages from the Bible for us. We're going to ask someone to grab the gift marked love. I'll just let you do it. <laughs> and you can just stand here and you can show everybody the gift. Yeah. 
Okay, and Car- while you're showing everyone, Caroline's going to read John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We can give anyone. I love it when. Aren't you happy that someone loves you too? What if your mom just said, "Go get dressed this morning"? Yeah, we love it when she says, "Okay, let me help you." Um, but that people love me. God also loves us and sent His Son Jesus to be our Savior and friend. Love is a very important Christmas gift from God to us. Okay, and now you can go place the love gift, walk around that way, and put it under the tree. Go ahead and shove it way under there because we're going to be decorating. Yes, that's perfect. Okay. The next gift we have is a baby. Can someone, you want to come over here and get the baby gift? And you want to show everyone that? And Caroline's going to read Luke one thirty-five. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. God sent a very special baby, a holy baby, to Mary, Jesus' mother. That little baby Jesus, who was born on the first Christmas, was both Mary and the Son of God. Now, that is a wonderful puzzle for us to try to understand, because babies are always a gift from God, and the baby Jesus was the best gift of all. Okay, you want to go put your gift under the tree? Let's let... Oh, does he want to do, or are you raising his hand for him? He doesn't want to. You want to come up and help me? Okay, now we have the gift of joy, and Caroline's going to read Luke 2, 10 and 11. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Okay, did you guys hear what the angel said in the Bible verse? He said that the new little baby king was for everyone in the whole world. Jesus came to be our friend and our Savior for all the boys and the girls. Can you guys think of a country? Which which one? China, uh, Mexico. I was thinking of continents. Oh, yeah. I probably didn't think of that one. That's a good one. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, yes. New York. Yeah. I mean, and even like Greenwood in 96, the angel said that it was good. The angel said good tidings of great joy. It should bring joy to everyone to hear that God sent his son to show them his love. So over the Christmas holidays, you can go ahead. You want to go put the gift under there? Over the Christmas holidays, when we're getting gifts, let's try to remember the gifts that we have from God. The baby Jesus, love, and joy. Okay? Hold on. I get to de- they get to decorate the tree in the middle. All right, we're going to we're gonna work on the mic. Yay. All right, so I'm glad somebody's excited. The, have y'all decorated the, the your, hold on. Have you decorated your Christmas tree yet? Yes. Y'all put up the Christmas tree before Thanksgiving? Guess what? I'm with you, okay? But, but now... Uh, all right, hold on. The uh, hold on. So this tree's a little different. Do y'all remember last year we had some some really unusual looking ornaments for what we? I do not have anything like this on my tree. Do y'all? No. No. It's like an angel wing. 
the, uh, this is called a chrismon, okay? Chrismon. chrismon. You hear the word, or Christ in the chris? Yes. And then you hear the word chrismon. monogram in mon, okay? Yeah. And so what we've done is we've taken and made ornaments, because what's interesting, if you look at most chrismon ornaments, you see white and gold for purity and God's royalty, okay? And so... So every ornament in here, white and gold. Has a reason. Yep, and it also has a reason. This one represents the Trinity because we talk about God being, being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so when we see three things, we always recognize that. And the butterfly, anybody want to guess what this one means? Uh, what you got, G? Uh, this, this one, uh, the butterfly. What happened? Where where does the butterfly come from? Out of a caterpillar, right? In the c cocoon. Yes. For us, represents new life, the resurrection. Okay. So, all right, y'all come decorate for me. That just carry the book. Okay. Somebody carry the book. Share. Go. All right. We're gonna have a song while they do this because this is gonna be loud. Come on, Lima. All right, y'all, y'all stand up and sing is fine with it. All right, so guys, we have a couple more presents that need to go under that tree. So Julia's going to help me out, and she's going to read our Bible verse. And we're going to see what else we can find to go under that tree. So the first thing we're going to read is about peace. And she's going to read Luke 2.14. Where, where? Just that one. Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favorite rest. So the angel said something about peace in there, right? They said, peace on earth, right? And that's where we live. And so we know that there's a lot of things that go on here on earth that we wish that we could change. But we all want peace, just like Jesus wanted us to have peace when he was here. Peace is a wonderful thing. And the way that it happens is when God comes into our hearts and he gives us peace. Rosalind? Rosalind, can you get the peace box? Come on. Come on. Say excuse me. Go get the box that says peace. Yeah, bring it over here. That's a pretty big box, right? But we need a lot of peace in our heart, don't we? That box is almost as big as you are. All right, why don't you take our piece and go place that under the tree so we can all share some. <laughs> all right. Garrison, do you want to get our next box? No, it's, hold on. Yep, there you go. All right. So the next box is going to be the star. So Odelia's going to read Matthew 2, 9 and 10 and tell us about the star. After they heard the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until the, it stopped over a place where a child was. When, the star was. when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. All right, so... Who saw that star? Do you guys remember? That's right, the three wise men. And so they told them to follow that star and they would find baby Jesus lying in a manger, right? And he would be the son of God. So that star is pretty important. But not everybody gets a star when they're born, right? Do you guys get a star when you're born? No, you do not have a star from when you were born. <laughs> All right, so we have comedy included today. 
there is no stars given to us when we're born. God made that star just for Jesus. Very important so the wise men could find their way and make it to baby Jesus. So that makes him a very special baby. It proves to us that Jesus was not just a good person, but he was the son of God. All right, let's go put that star under the tree, Garrison. Thank you. Why don't you go around all the way on the other side where Mary Jo is? It might fit over there. There you go. Good job. Autumn, do you want to get that last box? Okay. Who wants Mackenzie? Okay, go ahead. So we have one more gift to put under that tree this morning. It's the gift of giving. So Delia's going to read Matthew 2, verse 11. Coming on the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They saw the the bow the bow down. They saw they were, I'm sorry. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and present him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrhs. All right, so this is our last gift. But we have given a lot of gifts today, right? So we have given, what, joy, baby, peace, love, and, of course, the gift of giving. The last gift, the gift of giving, was the very first Christmas gift given from people to other people whose were given to Jesus by the wise men. They were expensive gifts intended for a king. But we give different types of gifts, don't we? What kind of gifts do we give at Christmas? Presents. Presents. What else? Toys. Toys. Food. Food. Exactly. So, clothes. What about friendship? Can we give friendship at Christmas? Can we invite someone to our Christmas dinner, maybe, that doesn't have anywhere else to go? And what about those people who stand outside of Walmart ringing that bell? Are they doing something important? Or are they just there because they think it's really warm outside and they want to stand there? They are. So, so they're doing a gift, right? They're collecting money for the Salvation Army or some other type of organization so that they can give that back to someone who doesn't have Christmas or who doesn't have as much as some of us have. Some of those gifts are absolutely free, right? Does it cost us anything to have a friend? Does it cost us anything to invite our neighbor over? Just niceness and kindness, right? So sometimes those are the best kinds of gifts. Christmas is a time of giving. And we learned that because God gave Jesus to us and because the wise men gave gifts to baby Jesus, that we should give the gifts that we have to offer. Sometimes that's kindness and niceness. It doesn't have to be food or money or clothes, but sometimes we have a lot of that stuff and we can give some of that too. Do you want to put the gift of giving under the tree? All right, so Mackenzie has all the gifts under the tree for us. And the exciting part is, is now that we can thank God for those gifts. And we're going to close in prayer. All right, everybody close their eyes, bow their heads. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your gift of yourself. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to us as the most precious gift we have. Lord, please help us to remember during this Christmas season that we have so many gifts to offer, Lord. It may not be food. It may not be clothes. But, Lord, it could be friendship, kindness, and just niceness to everyone around us. Help us to spread that Christmas love that you've given to us so that we can give it to others. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Did y'all like a candy cane? Yes. These are lifesaver candy canes. Please do not open them yet. Wait till after the service. Come on, take one. <laughs> as the band gets ready to, to sing, as we get ready to, to move to the greens, the, when I was thinking about this, the one thing is we get ready for this season Y'all have noticed the leaves are falling away, right? The grass, hallelujah, is dying at my house. All right. But the evergreen represents to us 
that which Christmas, that which winter cannot kill, isn't it? It's the one thing that's green still around us. And, for, and it ought to remind us that no matter what, it's the everlasting life. Because Christ is undefeated. No matter the, what will come his way, the evergreens remind us, and they're, they're the base layer for what we do today, of everlasting life and the gift from Christ of that. Okay, one thing, y'all don't be afraid to sing with them. <laughs> the, uh, y'all just, just, just hold on. The, uh, next we're going to bring in the flowers. One of the, um, Dr. Poinsett, who was an ambassador to Mexico, when the Poinsett was, or what is now, we call the Poinsettia, was found. The red represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The green and it, the red and the green are both leaves, actually. They remind us, again, the green of everlasting life that God gives us. The yellow, royalty is the closest thing that, that they could do for, for gold. And so when we see those poinsettias and we bring the color in, I don't know about you, but for me, color is, is pretty at my house. It makes me smile. And so when I can see that, I can start to see the gifts of God's love for us over and over. Am I on? Yeah, there we go. The, you may have a nativity set at your house or you may be like mine where my wife collects nativity sets, okay? And she has them from all over the world. And fortunately, most of them are like this, are the pieces. All right. Or, or you can have a couple of the ones that we do that are large, just like the one we're going to bring in. And it doesn't matter. And we've had out the wise men strung out across tables because they probably weren't there when Jesus was born. Doesn't matter. And I told them when they were, when they were about ready to bring this in, we're talking about them bringing it in. They said... I don't care where you put the pieces, except in the center of it, I want you to put Jesus. Because that is the whole reason that we have Advent. It's the whole reason we have Christmas. And, and Advent means that we are waiting with anticipation for the coming of the Christ child. And it really sets off our church, our calendar, our church calendar year. We start, because we will go from here and we will start looking to Easter. So when you set up your Advent, when you set up your nativity scene at your house, I, I don't really care how you set up the pieces. Make sure you got the right thing in the center when you look at it, because that's part of us preparing our hearts. Crystal's going to come and sing for us this morning. And then our, then our nativity scene is going to come in. I'm not going to talk long because there's turkey waiting, okay? <laughs> he, Jesus, was with God in the beginning. No, he was there. He said, through him all things were made. My mind immediately stops and runs back to the Psalms where it says, it's, you knew me in my mother's womb before I was ever created, before my parents ever thought of me, before my dad was a twinkle in my mother's eye, before the beginning of the foundations of time, Jesus knew you. And God knew he was going to send him for you. 
It says, in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Mm. The very breath I breathe. The very smile. I, I was at Rice this week serving Thanksgiving meals to kids and to parents for them to come in. And you know, sometimes children can get this look on their face. They just don't seem happy. I don't understand. Turkey. No dressing. <laughs> Gravy. You look at them and you smile. And I, would tell, and I told child after child, I said, that right there tells somebody you care. It tells somebody that you matter. And all of a sudden, when you turn on your smile, there's light. We walk through this world. Sometimes I'm afraid with that same look that I saw when you're offering them a blessing of turkey and dressing and a chance to eat with their parents. No. Why do you know thank you? No. Yes. Hmm. But as followers of Jesus Christ, there ought to be a different, in, different in, something different inside us. That baby ought to bring us joy. That baby ought to bring us peace. It ought to announce to the world with expectation that there is something different about us. Because the gifts we talked about and we put under the tree ought to matter in how we walk. They ought to matter on the expression of our face. And I realize I can look across. Argy's smiling at me and she's sitting back there with two broken ribs. No, you're not supposed to laugh. I'm afraid that hurts. I told Wayne he couldn't tell jokes at the house. But see, it's, it does matter. In the midst of all of the stresses and the strains and the things that go on in our life, and there's plenty. There's plenty to, to, to pout about or to run our lip out about, as my father would say. But there's an awful lot to realize the gifts of, of Christmas that God has poured out on you. It ought to can change because of what he's doing in here. It ought to can change the complexion out here. And when you do that, you are literally starting to give that gift back away. That gift that was poured out on you of grace and love. Forgiveness. That's what I want you to think about as you decorate or as you have already decorated. And you prepare your hearts for Christmas. For the coming of the Christ child. That's the best thing I can give you today. Because if you got that, you'll go a long way to making this the best Christmas you've had. We pray for you, then the Mary Jo and Jeff and the rest of the band are going to sing for us. And we're going to collect our offerings, and you can put your connection cards in the offering plate as well. If you're visiting with us, just give us the connection card. We're glad you're here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we have prepared your house, may we prepare our own hearts to worship, to give back some of the gifts that you've given us today. Thank you, Father. Amen.
All right. Before I do the blessing sending you out, I'm going to bless the food. I want you to stay and eat. There's five turkeys that have been fried this morning. Okay? Y'all aren't going to eat five turkeys. Okay? There's food galore. The, the, as normal around here, the food just kept coming, and that's good. All right? So if you're here and you didn't know or we missed you, don't sweat it. Just come eat with us. Okay? Let me send you out, out with this. As we go out today, may you know the gifts that God has poured out upon you. And may they change how you look at the world and your own circumstances today so that others may see Christ in you everywhere you go with every breath you take. Amen and God bless.